so it is one of uh, you know top 100 companies in the world it's a, i mean it's a, a very famous company its a product is chef okay chef is actually company name okay so so what actually we do with the chef see here system admins you know right system admins like you know windows admins linux admins windows admin linux admins what what they do every day they are responsible for administration right for example they, uh, for example what what actually they do they create files folders installing package packages uh, managing services creating users creating groups managing those user and group permissions manage 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 users and groups okay and uh, the all kind of you know web packages and all the patch updates patch updates and troubleshooting so the this is this is the day to day task day to day activity of system admin right whether you take windows admin or linux admin all troubleshoot it's all about administration activity okay either you take windows admin or linux admin these are day to day activities of system admin okay so for example let's take one example in this okay so let's take packages okay so suppose they have 1000 servers in their company Thousand servers. Just assume that we have an admin system admin. I have one system admin in our company. Just I am giving an example. One system admin is there. So he wants to install thousand packages in thousand machines. That means each machine he needs to install thousand packages. Okay, each machine. So how many times he need to install? You know that's for thousand into. Thousand, right? Okay. Thousand into thousand. Each machine, in each machine, we need thousand packages. Like that, we have thousand machines are there. Okay. Next, how much time will it take, guys? It needs to take remote session of each and every machine. Okay. If it is Windows, it will take a de remote desktop. If it is Linux, it will take SSH. Okay, let's say you do that machine, and he will install. He will keep on installing all thousand by. He will run all thousand commands one by one, one by one, in all these thousand machines. So it will take months, right? Minimum, it will take so many months. Correct or not? Same thing. Let's take one more example. So he wants to install. He wants to create thousand user records, thousand users in all thousand machines. Each machine he. He should he should create thousand users user accounts. So again, how much time it will take, guys? It will take lot of time, right? Okay, it will take lot of time. So by using this chef, by using this chef, earlier it used to take you know for example take it used to take months, right? So many months it takes. By using this chef tool, the same task we can do it within one to two minutes. the same task by using chef we can do it within one to two minutes that to same one person okay so that is the advantage of chef that's why nowadays you won't find any jobs for system admins either window windows admin to if you can forget linux admin at least we have jobs but very very less because one devops you need he is replacing all system admins by using these tools okay so here you need to recruit how many system admins around around uh, 40 to 50 around 50 but only one devops engineer is enough that to within less time he can achieve he is achieving these things understood right so that's the advantage of chef so how we can achieve this one that's what how we are achieving this one that is what we are going to learn in this tool okay further you need to wait for You need to spend around five days, five to six days. Okay, so see here. This is very very important tool. 
out of all devops tools if you prioritize all these tools chef occupies top position number one position okay chef occupies number one position that's it that's the importance of this chef guys sometimes in interviews they will ask only about chef they want devops in it they ask only about chef they won't even touch other two and so that happened to me once so they wanted one devops in it and they asked in and out of chef that's it they haven't even touched you know git the remaining tools they they didn't touch that so that's the importance of chef okay so the pims in a simple definition whatever system admins they used to do it earlier manually we are automating that task by using this tool okay i repeat whatever system admin they used to do earlier and they are doing now manually that task we are doing with the help of this one we are automating that task so that we can reduce the time and all the advantages that you get uh, that you know you, uh, if you use that by using tool what are the advantages that you get the same advantages you are getting here within less time you can achieve this one you can have quality and uh, we are uh, lesser spending and uh, all those things complaints and all those things will get here okay so this process is there right what our system would be they used to do earlier manually we are doing we are automating that one this process we call configuration management cm configuration management configuration in a sense see think this is a configuration this is configuration we are managing that one we are managing that one okay that's why this process we call configuration management okay we achieve this process by using some tools like chef ansible like we achieve this configuration management by using some tools that's why we call these tools as configuration management tools source code management is a process we achieve the process by using a tool called git we achieve the process by using so many tools like git svn understood so source code management is a process okay version control is a process we achieve that one by using some tools called git svn like so same configuration management is a process we achieve this process by using some tools this is what configuration this is what and we are managing this configuration understood so we achieve this process by uh, by using a famous uh, methodology called IAC, IAC, infrastructure as code, infrastructure as code. So here we convert code into infrastructure, or infrastructure into code. In either one form to another form. What we do? For example, you want to create thousand users. what is the first you write a code to create users i'll tell you what is the code and which language we write so we write a code to create those thousand users so we have written code here if you apply that code thousand users will be created so we are converting code into infrastructure actual infrastructure or infrastructure into code one form to another form we are Just we are converting. Okay, that's what I E C. We convert the code into infrastructure. You write code. If you apply that code, the code will be converted as an infrastructure. That's what actual users. Users got created. That is my infrastructure. I T infrastructure. Understood, guys? In this till now, whatever I have explained, any doubts here? Any doubts here? Any doubts? we are going we are going to do deep dive here okay so in this whatever i have explained here any doubts from anyone please just one guys any doubts no sir uh okay now i'll show the slides slides configuration management it's a method through which we automate 
admin task. That's all. System admin and Windows, Windows admin or Linux admin. We whatever they do, whatever they used to do, and whatever they are doing now, still in companies manually. That task we are automating. The process we call configuration management. Configuration management turns your code into infrastructure. You are writing a code. You are writing some code. You you are applying that one. You are applying that one. So that code will be converted into infrastructure, actual infrastructure. Okay. So you can test this code. That means indirectly you are testing this infrastructure. If it is fine, then it will be fine. You can repeat this same environment. Suppose you want to create hundred more users. Same thing as only code only. You can copy and you can put. You can give to some other person. Suppose your friend is requesting. Say you have written a code to create hundred users, right? So you you have written a code to install hundred pack uh, install hundred packages. I want to install same hundred packages. So what I can do simply I can give that. It's the only code, right? I can give to my friend. So what he will do? He will just he will apply that one. So all hundred users, hundred packages will be installed. So that means it's a repeatable. You can repeat the same code. And since it is only a code, we can apply version control system like Git. That's what version control. We can apply versions, and you can get back previous version. You can proceed further. You can come back to previous version. Right. So your code is versionable, repeatable, and testable. Since everything is a code, that's very easy, right? Testing the code is very easy. Copying the code is very easy. Apply version control on code is very easy. Understood? That is what configuration management. So configuration management is a process. Okay. IT infrastructure refers to IT infrastructure refers to composite of software, like installing packages, you know, uninstalling patch updates, network. Network connectivity, IP address, and managing all those things. People managing, creating users, groups, you know, giving permissions, deleting users, okay, adding users into group, okay, all those things. Process, starting services, stopping services, managing services, restarting. Okay, so this is the this is IT infrastructure. We are automating this IT infrastructure. System admin they used to do manually. Now we are automating this one. Pain points. That's what whatever system admin they used to do manually. That time you know they these these are some pain points. I mean uh, they used to face the uh, issues uh, with respect to these tasks. So first one managing users and groups because here think in a bigger larger perspective, bigger perspective. Okay, so hundreds and hundreds of users, hundreds of groups. It's not a small thing, right? Right. So we need to. It takes a lot of time. Okay. And dealing with packages, that too, so many packages, upgrading packages, downgrading. Okay, so this also takes a lot of time. Taking backups, deploying all kinds of applications. Okay, configuring services. These are some pain points. Okay, pain pain points. So they 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 do. I mean, lot of effort. They put lot of effort here because it's a. They used to do manually, right? That's why I mentioned it's a pain point. Now, why why we need configuration management? What what are the advantages that we are getting? Use configuration management. The first one is complete automation. We are automating that complete all these pain points and all automating. That means no manual intervention. Automatically, we are achieving all those things. That is one thing. Increasing uptime. Sometimes, if you want to upgrade any package, downgrade, okay. If you want to do anything, you need to stop your machine during runtime. You cannot do that one. You need to stop your machine. Sometimes, if you do it manually, if you upgrade the package or anything manually, it take hundred one hour. If you do it by using a tool, it takes it take one minute. That means in manual process downtime is for one hour because for one hour you cannot use your machine by using automation it is downtime is for one minute. So here we are reducing the downtime. That means we are increasing the uptime, maximum availability, high availability. 
always up and running. Okay, that's what we are increasing the uptime. Got it? That means always available. Improve performance. Obviously, tool, machine-made things are always perfect, right? Performance-wise, quality-wise, right? Compared to man-made things. That's why performance-wise, it's good because we are using tool right here. Ensure compliance follows whether you are following best practices or not. Sometimes it is not so important that whether you have achieved one thing, achieved the, the task or not. So, you know, accomplish the task or not. Sometimes it's also same, it's also same important that how you achieved that one. Whether you have followed best practices or not, that is also same important. Why, you know, the Mahatma Gandhi in India became so popular? So popular. We achieved independence. That is, that is not so important. The important point is we achieved independence through non-violence way. The process that we followed, that he followed. That's why he became so popular, right? Okay. Achieving independence is something that's okay, fine. We achieved independence through non-violence way. Right? That is what, you know, how you achieved that. Whether you have followed the best practices or not, that is also very, very important. Got it? And prevent errors. Obviously, you know, wherever human intervention is there, error is there. Right? So tool means we can minimize those errors. Tools won't do any mistake, right? They follow proper process. So chance of errors are very, very less. Reduce cost. So obviously tools, we need not to pay salaries to tools, right? And they won't demand hikes, right? So that's why you purchase tool once. It's only one time effort. You use 24 by 7, keep on running that one. Understood? It? So that is what we are reducing the cost. Okay, these are the advantages that we are getting if you use this configuration management tool. Okay, so this configuration, these are the advantages of configuration management. That means these are the advantages which are common for each and every configuration management tool, guys. Here we are not even started discussing chef. We are just talking about configuration management. These advantages are common to each and every configuration management tool. Okay. Like Chef, Ansible, Puppet, Salt Stack. Okay. This is common for these are these advantages are common for each and every configuration management tool. Now, now we are talking about Chef. Why why only Chef? There also we discussed right? why only Git. So here also why only Chef. So some are common, this same, you know, because it's a configuration management tool, right? So the same thing, some points are common to other configuration management tools as well. Chef is an administration tool. By now you understood. It's a complete administration tool. Okay, see here. We discussed, right, in my demo, I have explained dev ops. Dev ops. So git maven. Jenkins, that's Selini. These comes under development. These we call development tools or developer tools. Chef, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes. Magios, CloudWatch. These are administrating, administrator tools. These are developer tools, these are administrator tools. So by now you understood why Shafi, Shafi call administrator tools. That's what whatever system admin they used to do earlier manually, we are automating that one. So obviously we are doing that the system admin task only, right? Okay. Now, see here. Chef is an automation tool. Whatever system admins, that's what. Linux and Windows admins. Used to do manually. Now we are automating all those tasks by using Chef. With I mean, not only with respect to Chef, you can use any configuration management tool. So for example, water pots. I mean, just it's an example. You see. You are you are preparing that water box, hundred water box. 
okay so you want to purchase 100 water bottles one guy is uh, preparing that pot by using his hand another guy is preparing these pots by using a tool machine so from where you you would like to purchase obviously whoever is using tool why because in man man made to pots all 100 will be of 100 different sizes you cannot expect much quality but tool all are in sync you can expect much quality right so that's the advantage of tool can use this tool whether your servers are in on premise or in cloud or in vmware you can install these tools on any machine that machine could be uh, running in on premise or could be running in a cloud or you know irrespective of platform you can install this tool in any of these machines so it turns your code into infrastructure obviously chef turns your code into infrastructure so same that code is versionable repeatable and testable that already we discussed so this is common for all configuration tools you only need to tell what the desired configuration should be not how to achieve it for example see here this is you this is your office okay then one day you are you are taking your own car your own car so if you drive your own car you should know where to take left where to take right that all you should know right then you reach your office but you are booking uber car uber car so you do you need to know where to take left and right no right what you'll say i want this destination that's it so the, the how the cab driver will take that is he setting but here if you drive your own car you should know where to take left right and all the traffic signals you know where to take shortcuts you should know that means how to go that also you should know here but here what is your destination that is important here here what you say if you if you drive your own car where to go and how to go both are important here where and how you should know these two but here only you should know is where understood right so same thing if you use if you do it manually okay you should know how to install those things what to install that is fine how to install also you need to know how to achieve that one okay but if you use configuration management tool what to install that's it how to install chef will take care you need not to say how to install what you say i want that package should be installed how to install that is your headache okay so see here you only need to tell what the desired configuration should be not how to achieve it because chef will take care how to achieve that one only what you say that destination what i want so even if you write any script any manual you know language program language you need to give, you need to say how to achieve it so if user is already there skip if user is not there like this if else conditions all those things you need to give right okay that means you are saying how to achieve it as well but by using config management tool so you need not to say how to achieve it chef will take care of this one this config management will take care of this one for you understood that means we are you know simplifying our task through automation get desired state through automation get desired state see here okay this is my laptop wherever i am writing the code this is my actual server actual machine in this machine i want to create 1000 users in this machine okay so what is my actual state of this machine now there are no users it's a black empty that is actual state what is my desired state i want to create 1000 users that is my desired state you understood the difference between actual state and desired state actual state nothing is there as of now desired state i want to create 1000 users so so we are installing 1000 users by writing some code we are installing 1000 users that means through automation we are achieving our desired state of the server now we have converted this auto you know uh, actual state to desired state now what is my actual state here 1000 users that we both are matching actual state and desired state through automation we are achieving our desired state of the server our required state we are achieving through automation by using this chef 
Okay. Understood, guys. Any doubts here? Till here. Before we proceed further, any doubts? No doubts. Okay. So coming to chef infrastructure, chef architecture, chef architectural setup. I'll draw here. Clearly, you'll understand. See here. So, this is your company infrastructure. In your company, you have thousands of servers. Just assume this is your company's infrastructure. Okay. So, so these generally people call these are servers, right? In your company, we have thousands of servers. That means those thousands of servers are these servers. So they use the word servers. Others they use the word servers. But whenever you are dealing with chef, you should not use. You should not give the name server. You should call them as a nodes. Nodes. Why? Because in chef terminology, we have a server. That is what we call chef server. So for other employees, these could be a servers. But for you, for DevOps unit, these are nodes. Because we have chef server is separately. Understood? And we have one more setup is chef workstation. Chef workstation. So what we do, workstation means your laptop where you work. That is our workstation. So chef server is a place where you write the code. I told you, right, we convert the code into infrastructure. Where you write the code. That I have written a code to install 100 packages. Chef server is a place where you upload that code, where you store that code, where you save that code. Okay. That code will be stored here, saved here. So workstation is a place where you write the code. Server is a place where you upload that code. Nodes are the place. These are the places where you apply that code. It's upload. It is applied. That means actual users will be created here. That's why we are converting code into infrastructure, right? <laughs> okay. So three stages are there in Chef. We call Chef Workstation, we call Chef Server, and these we call Chef Nodes. These nodes for others, they might use servers. But you should not use server. Why? Because we have one chef server. Easy. That's why you should call it chef terminology. We call these as nodes. Okay, we call them as a nodes. Okay, we call them as a nodes. Understood? Important terminology. Important terminology. See here, first one is chef server, chef workstation, where you write that code. Chef server, don't you know, uh, look in, you know, don't try to search for the definitions of these words in Google or in chef site. They are giving definition, but they are very much in confusing nature. They are giving very, very big, big definitions. In a simple terms, I have simplified these definitions. In a single line. So workstation is a place where you write the code. Server is a place where you upload that code. Where and where you store that code. Chef node is a place where you apply that code in simple line. Now they are giving some tools. Knife, chef, client, or high. I'll explain these tools. Okay, let's take one bigger diagram. So this is chef workstation. Okay. 
This is shelf server. Let's take only two nodes. This is one node. This is another node. Okay. Node one. Node two. Node one and node two. Two nodes are there. So here you are going to install Chef packages in all three stages. Here you are going to install Chef workstation package. Here you are going to install server package. Here you are going to install node packages. Chef packages. Three different packages for three at 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 each level at each stage. So see here. So you write code, right? You write code. and you upload that code to server so how can you upload there must be communication they, they should have communication between these two connection between these two so that connection is knife knife is a tool which establishes communication it's a, it is it is we use this one to connect workstation to server as well as server to nodes knife knife is a tool which is responsible to establish connection among workstation server and nodes okay knife is a tool okay it also knife is a, understood knife is a tool which is responsible to establish connection among workstation server and node okay next see here the place where you write the code you obviously you need to create a file and you need to write the code right this code okay the place where you write the code the file where you write the code that file we call recipe recipe okay so you keep so many files like you keep so many recipes in one folder kind of structure you keep so many recipes in one folder that folder we call cookbook You might have observed the terminology if you see carefully. This is, you know, something related to kitchen, right? Kitchen environment. Yeah. Any specific reason yeah. for naming all these things? <laughs> I do don't know why they have given this name. Because that's chef. Yeah, the tool is tool name is chef. chef. Yeah. I mean, that, that's why. I mean, why especially they have chosen these words, chef, cookbook, recipe, and we have one more tool called kitchen. And then we have name. I mean, we have a tool called kitchen. For testing purpose, you don't know why. Why they have used, you know, taken this technology? <laughs> okay, looks to be foodie. Huh? <laughs> uh, the guy who invented this might be foodie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, okay, cookbook. The name is uh, the uh, the folder kind of structure. The name is cookbook. Now here. i told you right you are going to write the, some code and the code you have to write in a ruby language ruby that's why the file name is file extension is dot r dot rb so you are going to write in ruby guys you have to write in ruby only guys okay that's why ruby is important that we are it's very very easy we are going to learn it okay ruby is very very easy language If you see carefully, automatically you understand what is what actually is happening. Okay, now it's not actual actual Ruby. It's not actual Ruby. They have modified this Ruby, okay, uh, to support this Chef tool. Okay, they have modified. They have uh, modified that Ruby. So that's why we are using modified Ruby here, not actual Ruby. Okay, the small small changes. Okay, so same difference between Unix and Linux. some they have added some feature that became linux so same thing they have modified this ruby okay that modified ruby we are using in chef that's why this modified ruby here we call dsl language dsl domain specific language specially they have designed this language for this chef domain okay specially they have designed this language for chef domain that's why we call dsl domain specific language okay now whenever you install a package in node 
whenever you install shuff package in node you will get two tools guys you will get two tools one is shuff hyphen client and the other one is ohai shuff hyphen client and ohai so shuff hyphen client is responsible to to go to shuff server and pull that code and apply that code into shuff node okay shuff client the tool the tool is this tool is responsible to go to shuff server and pull that code and it will apply that code in nodes that's why shuff is shuff is pull mechanism not push server is not pushing any code here server is not pushing any code here instead node is pulling the code understood okay so that's why it is pulling mechanism why i am stressing this word ansible is a tool where we use the mechanism is push mechanism but shuff here we use pull mechanism okay shuff client runs frequently every now and then the timing we can set for example we give 30 minutes so after every 30 minutes it will come and it will verify for the code if any code is there it will come and pull it will apply that code here okay that is the purpose of shuff client that means see here you can think knife is a kind of road shuff client is a kind of two shuff client is a kind of vehicle so we it uses shuff client uses this this road knife is a kind of road shuff client you can think like a vehicle so this vehicle follows this road comes uses this road to go to shuff server and take that code understood so coming to ohai oha is a tool and same it's a it's a kind of you know store database it is having its own database it's a storage so what is this oha it stores current state information of this machine current state each and every detail of this machine will be stored in oha how many users are there how many files are there how many directories are there what is the ip address what is the mac what is the host name everything it stores the current information of that machine current actual state if you want to see that actual state of that machine you need to verify no hi actual state for example let's let's you know take one example now i have written a code to create one user just i have written a code and i have applied that code here so that code is here actual code is here now what is my current state current state is nothing because that we can see in ohi in current current state there is no user okay what is my desired state i want that user must be present in this this machine that's my desired state so there's a mismatch between current state and desired state current state zero users desired state one user okay so what actually happens before shuff client runs shuff client runs first shuff client they, it will verify no hi to get that uh, to get the information about current state before shuff client runs it will verify no hi store to get the current information about current state so it, now it came to know yes current state is nothing zero users now shuff client is going to shuff server yes it find something new okay so which is not there in current state okay it know that current state is zero user now it find something new yes it is desired state is something new it's one user is it now it will take this code it will pull that code it will apply so user got created oh high store will be updated with the current state immediately okay updated because it applied here right now now what is my current state one user is it correct one user is it now after that i mean second shuffle end is running before shuffle end runs it will verify no high for the current state what is my current state now one user is it now shuffle end is going here and it is verifying here it find one user but it won't do any action why because current state also same right one user is already there desired state also same so that side will not take that user again it will not do anything it won't do the task repeatedly guys for example now i have created i have written a file a code to install one package now i have written a code to install one package that i have uploaded to server now 
But in my oil, oil store current state one user. Shift line runs. Shift line before runs. It will verify no oil for the current state. Now it is my current state one user is there. Now shift line is coming and seeing here. It find user as well as package. User is already there, so that's why it won't take any action. But package is not there. That means there is a mismatch between current state and desired state. So it will take this package. It will apply that package here. It won't do. It won't create user again. It won't override this user again. It will just create a package, and immediately that will be updated. How will be updated? Now current state is matching with desired state. So shift plane is responsible to match current state with the desired state. Understood? So that we are achieving our desired state through automation. Understood, guys? So in each and every tool, you will get its own shift plane. its own oil store okay if you want to see any details about the machine of the current state you verify no oil okay understood this process guys any doubts here any doubts no doubts so please respond guys if you have any doubts okay. no doubts okay so here understand carefully it is not repeating the tasks right user is already there it is not creating user again it is not overriding package is already there it is not overriding that package so it is not doing the things repeatedly same task it is not doing repeatedly that process we call idem pendency idem pendency not doing the same task repeatedly is called idem pendency not doing the same task repeatedly is called idem pendency understood right idem pendency so this process we call idem pendency fine so see here that means chef follows idem pendency concept idem pendency model okay not doing the same task repeatedly again and again not doing okay so see here knife it's a tool to establish communication among workstation server and node that we already discussed chef client is a tool runs on runs on each and every node so it is there in each and every node whenever it's called chef by default you will get this tool that runs on each and every node guys each and every node having its own chef client it is to pull code from chef server it is to pull the code from chef server pulling mechanism very very important say one question here yeah so a uh, chef client Pulls the code from the chef server and it also installs it on the uh, uh, chef client, right? Installs uh, in chef node. Node, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh hi. It maintains current state information of chef node. Maintains current state information. So that's why we call this oh hi tool as system discovery tool. If you want to discover anything about that system, so, okay, we use oh hi. System discovery tool. Each and every minute detail you will get by using OHI. That's what it, that's current state. That information about that uh, state, current state. That's what we call system discovery tool. If you want to discover anything about that particular system, that node, we use OHI. Item dependency tracking the state of system resources to ensure that changes should not reapply repeatedly. Changes should not be applied reapplied repeatedly. tracking the state of system resources to ensure that to make sure that not doing the task again and again repeatedly to ensure that changes should not be reapplied repeatedly understood now i told you that we are going to write uh, code in recipe and we keep all so many recipes in a folder kind of structure called cookbook so if you want you can write this code from the scratch or else that means you can write this recipes and cookbooks on the scratch or else directly you can take a custom cookbooks from the chef supermarket this is online community where you will get custom cookbooks directly you can download the cookbook from there you need not to write the code every time from the scratch that you can make use of existing cookbooks okay so the place is chef supermarket see this word also <laughs> where you purchase your groceries right that supermarket 
So it's a chef supermarket where you'll where you'll get custom code. Where you'll get custom code. Uh, guys, so just one second. I'll be back. Okay, so Chef Supermarket is a place where you get custom code. Directly you can download cookbook from there and you can use that one. You can modify as per your needs, your requirements, you can start using that. So every time you need to write that code from the scratch, guys. Understood? So this is important terminology that this, uh, you know, we, this terminology we use a lot in Chef. Okay. Now, let's you know install this shelf. So, I'll tell you how to install this shelf. So, what we'll do install shelf means we are installing shelf workstation package. Okay, so that's what uh, shelf workstation package. Just to follow these steps, okay, so here go to shelf.sh. Actual website is shelf.io, guys. Chef website is chef.io. This is the chef's official website. Okay. Official website. Okay, fine. So, recent, earlier we used to download that chef workstation package from chef.io only. But just one month back, one month back, they have changed that website. Okay, if you want to download that chef package, you need to go to chef.sh. So what we are going to do now, just one month back only, they have changed this site. So what we are going to do, we are going to launch one server and we are going to install chef package, work, workstation package. So it will become chef workstation. Okay, so let's read now. So go to aws let's launch one machine that's what i told you right aws is my important first first thing entrance step is aws after that we are going to launch linux machine so that's the interview also you know follow this they they ask questions in this way only the pattern you know the follow first they ask questions from aws then linux Okay, so let's launch one. Uh, let me terminate my previous. Oh. See here, you can enable termination protection. Okay, see here, if you want to terminate, you cannot terminate this one. So, straight here, terminate, you cannot terminate. So, it's a protection from accidental termination. So, what you do, uh, go to actions, instant settings, change the termination protection. Here, we I already enabled. Okay, that's why you cannot terminate. Now I'm going to disable. See, here is disabled. Now I can terminate this one. Action, straight. Terminate. Yes, terminate. Like this, you can enable termination production. 
okay so that you know uh, sometimes you you actually wanted to uh, stop this machine but suddenly you click on this one terminate right so that's what sometimes if you terminate then you cannot start this machine again right okay so that's a, that's why you can enable termination protection okay fine so let me launch one machine guys you take any machine any linux so okay. add storage tags give it tag yeah workstation but here it is 6a right 6a shop workstation 6a now next now select any existing security group so here just do not open http and ssh guys that's it http and ssh that's it Now review and launch. Launch. Select any key pair. Launch instance. Go to that instance already. Okay, so let's go inside this machine. Okay, so first two commands you mandatory commands you need to run this one sudo su. Next, yum update minus y. Okay. Now See here. So go to shove.sh. Shove.sh. Here you can see that downloads. Click on downloads. Now you can see Chef Workstation. Right? Chef Workstation. So click here, get it. Click here. Now See, our machine comes under Red Hat family, guys. This is Amazon Linux. Amazon Linux. Sent to us. Red Hat Enterprise Linux. These comes under Red Hat family. Ubuntu. Ubuntu comes under Debian family. Debian family. Okay, so so right now our machine comes under Red Hat family, right? So let's say Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So click on this one, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Now, yes, this is a section of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So Chef is not a default package, guys. We need to download and we need to install. Unlike Git, Git is already there in will be there in our machines in a download stage. But Chef, we have to download and we have to install. Two steps are there. So see here, take that Red Hat Red Hat Seven. Copy this URL. Copy this URL and come here. Type a W get W get. You know, right? This command already we discussed in Linux commands. W get paste this. That's it. Right click. That's it. Simple. So do ls. We have downloaded. Now I want to install this one. Now what is the command? Yum install. 
chagf hyphen tab. You can make use of tab command, guys. Every time you need not to type the whole thing minus y, or else you can simply highlight that will be copied and right click that will be pasted. Enter. See, we are installing chef. That's it. We have installed Chef. Now, if you want to verify whether you have installed Chef successfully or not, so what is our Linux command, guys, to see whether package is there or not? Yeah. With Chef to see whether package is there or not. Okay. If you want to verify the version, Chef space hyphen v. The version, guys. You have to remember version numbers. Okay. That version is very very important. Sometimes they lost you in interviews. Okay. Uh, which version are you using? That means you should not take any break. You should not think. Okay, immediately you have to say that version number. Okay. So remember this one. This is the latest version. So but with this chef, we got all these tools. Chef run, chef client, delivery CLA, bugs, test kitchen. Right? We got all these tools. So one more command to verify version. Chef space hyphen hyphen version. The same thing, no difference at all. Okay. So we have successfully installed Chef. That's it. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, tomorrow onwards, we are going to you know uh, see this practical, complete practical. We are going to see. Okay. So hope you understood this one. That you know theory part, what is Chef and how we use. And tomorrow onwards, we are going to jump into this practical thing. Okay. So that's it for today. Please you know try to install the Chef in your machines. Okay. That's it for today. Any doubts here in today's class? I can send the PPTs. This you want PPTs? Okay. Uh, anyways, you know, anyways, you are getting recorded video, right? What is the use of the getting these PPTs? <laughs> but every time I can't open the recording. Ah, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I'll share these PPTs. That's not an issue. Say one question. Did you find anything about GitLab? Uh, so give me some more time. Actually, I didn't get the time because you know, for a whole day, I Generally engage with classes and. Uh, uh, sir, I got that answer. GitLab. Acha, yeah. Tell me, what is it? Uh, actually, GitLab is enterprise version. They don't want to share their uh, their anything on the internet. That's why they use that GitLab. That is just internal for any enterprise. Acha, that's uh, kind of you know okay private uh, GitHub kind of. Yeah, but private they are still that is on uh, somewhere in cloud. Uh, third party is using that. Uh, okay. So, that in GitLab, the full control is on enterprise. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a complete enterprise kind of thing. Okay, so kind yes. of complete private thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. So I will also yeah. explain that one. It's like that we have to our own use that and admin that on our own. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll also look into that one and I'll let you know. Okay, so uh, fine. So let's meet tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Good day. Bye. 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 bye.